Hello, this is Richard White, and we're going to take a few very brief moments to talk about how you can draw various types of objects in Microsoft Word. So uh, we're going to start out by following this little uh, outline here. The uh, procedures that we're going to go through here, they work for pre pretty much all versions of Microsoft Office. Your toolbars or your menus might look slightly different depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC or different um, different versions of Microsoft Word. Uh, but you should be able to find the commands to do the, all of these things regardless of what version you're using. So let's start out by um, creating a new document. What we're going to do is we're going to begin with a blank document here and I want to draw a cylinder on a inclined plane. This is going to be something that I'm going to be using in my report here. So uh, very first thing that we want to do is make sure that we turn on the drawing toolbar. We're going to be using that. We'll be making the grid visible, opening up the toolbox, and then we'll start drawing our cylinder. So here we go. Under View, you want to make sure that you are looking at the Drawing Toolbar. So you can go down here to Drawing Toolbar, and that'll open up a little uh, toolbar off to the side here. That's going to be important for us. We want to make sure that we turn on the grid. We're going to be snapping to a grid here. So you can see over here this little grid icon, grid options. We'll make sure that we uh, are snapping to the grid in Print Layout and that we are displaying grid lines on the screen. Definitely want to do that. Make sure that that is checked. Vertical will do it every one grid and horizontal also every one grid. And It starts out with a default of 0.25. I'm actually going to drop that down to 0 0.13 inches which will give me a little bit more granularity there. So now I can see the grid on there. I also want to make sure that I open up my toolbox. I want to have the toolbox available to me here. So when I click that open, that's going to give me lots of options here that I can use as I'm uh, figuring out what, what's going on here. That's going to be very, very useful to me. Now let's take a look and see how we can go about drawing a cylinder. We're going to run through all these steps right here. So first of all, let's begin with a circle. We'll go over here and get a basic shape. The default settings for these basic shapes, I'm going to make it about this big to begin with. The default settings for these basic shapes uh, with the shadow turned on and everything, I'm not really a fan of those. We're not going to be using that. So let's make the color something a little bit uh, less vibrant. Um, here's a nice green shade, perhaps. Let's make the color of the line something that's a little bit more sedate and we'll knock that down to about one point that line thickness and let's get rid of that shadow. There we've got a very nice little circle there that we're going to be using. Uh, I want to duplicate that so you can either go up here to edit and uh, copy and then paste it. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to do this. You can also do a command D or a control D to duplicate it. I've copied it so now I can paste it and you can see I've got a second copy of that circle. I could go ahead and draw a couple lines here and make a cylinder shape, but it, if you're familiar at all with uh, art or perspective, you know that this second circle in the background here that's going to be part of our cylinder should be a little bit smaller than this one because of the foreshortening that occurs. So um, I'm going to actually go ahead and make that circle a little bit smaller. And now I need to create the cylinder effect. So I'm going to do that by drawing a line first of all. And you can see the line that I'm going to draw here is that silly blue with that shadow. So unclick the shadow, make it a black line, and let's make it a respectable one point line. That line is going to go from the edge of this first circle back to this other guy. And it's not quite lined up the way I'd like it to. So I'm going to do another little trick here. I'm going to turn off the snap to grid. And that's going to allow me then to adjust this line any way I want. I can actually drag it around a little bit and see if I can get that line more or less right on the cylinder um, that I'm going to be looking at. You can also use the arrow keys. Here I'm using the arrow keys to move that line around and get it more or less just where I want. So I'm going to go ahead and get that guy in there. I'm going to do the same thing. You can see how he's sticking out a little bit, so maybe I'll move him over just a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing now with another line. I'm going to duplicate that guy and put that other line down here so I'm going to get the same line effect going on and it's pretty close to a cylinder. It's almost there. It's, the problem is I've got those little white areas in there and that's not part of my cylinder effect. That's really not what I'm looking for. 
I want to get that guy over there. I'm getting a little fussy here. So what I need to do is fill those guys in. So here's the trick. You go in here and choose under the lines. You choose Freeform Tool. And I'm going to trace by clicking on these points here a shape that's going to have that shape. It doesn't look like much of a cylinder, but watch what happens. I'm going to fill it up with that green color. I'm going to make the line completely go away. I'm going to choose no line and get rid of that dumb shadow. And now it's kind of a cylinder. It's almost a cylinder. Let me grab this guy in front and bring him to the front. It kind of looks like he got put in the back now, but I'm going to bring him to the very front. That's looking much more like a cylinder. I've also got uh, that fill shape there. I might want to send it back a little bit, send backward, and maybe one more to send him backward. And now you can see that those lines I've drawn have produced the cylinder effect. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's not uh, what you'd get from a professional graphics program, but it's not too bad. I want to be able to move this guy around too. I don't want to like click here and drag him off and then see my cylinder fall apart. So one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here to select all of those objects and then group them. So now I can take that cylinder. Let me go ahead and choose snap to grid again. And now I can take that cylinder and move him around all I want using my arrow keys or just dragging him about. That's not too bad. Let's use the same approach for creating a, an inclined plane. Go ahead and here and get a basic shape. There's a triangle. Get rid of the shadow. Let's come up with a different fill here. Uh, maybe this blue fill is that's not too bad. I'll choose black there. So that's not too bad. Um, I'm going to duplicate that. I need two triangles, of course, to make my inclined plane, and I've got the make. I forgot to make the one in back a little bit smaller. So uh, I'll shrink him down just a little bit there to allow me to get some perspective. And same thing here. Let's get a line drawn from one to the other. I've got my snap grid on, so this makes it a lot easier to figure out what's going on. Make it black. Make it a one-point line and get rid of the shadow. Duplicate him and bring him down here so we get the same kind of effect going. And remember our trick now, we'll choose the Freeform tool and we'll trace that out. And it should be very easy to trace because we're on that snap grid mode now. Trace that out. There's our shape. Get rid of the shadow. Get rid of the line. We don't want the line. And just give it that same color and very nice little inclined plane effect there. Um, you can see that when I bring this down, it's uh, first of all it's behind the plane not in front so I can take that whole cylinder now and bring it to the front and it doesn't really look like it's rolling down the plane like I'd like it to uh, I'm not getting quite the effect there I suppose I could try and make the plane a little bit longer now oh, what did I forget to do I didn't group the plane so command Z or control Z to undo and let's go ahead and group these guys I'm gonna go ahead and group them there we go. I can extend this plane now, maybe get a little bit more of an effect. And when I drop this guy, it's still just not not quite the effect that I'm looking for here. Um, I could shrink this cylinder down a little bit, I suppose. Um, but it's still, do you see how it's still kind of canted? It doesn't look like it's rolling the right way. Here's another great trick. Select the cylinder, choose Rotate, and we're going to freely rotate that guy. And at that point, I'm going to start to move them around a little bit and it's a little bit closer now to looking like a cylinder that would be rolling down that plane. That's not too bad. That's not bad at all. So uh, again, not professional quality but pretty darn good. So I'm going to go with that. Let's take a look now at some last steps here. We need to be able to put force arrows on this. We need to draw text boxes that will be used as labels and we also want to look at equation editor for equations. So jumping back to my document here, let's say I want to do a free body diagram for the forces acting on the cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and uh, again choose a line here, but now it's going to be an arrow. And let's do the force of gravity acting on this guy. Um, I can draw the arrow down. You can see that blue is not working very well, so I've, I'm going to do the usual thing. I'm going to make it black and get the size of that line about what I want. You can see that it's not quite centered there, so I can 
turn off that snap to grid and use the arrow keys maybe to nudge it over and have that line coming out more or less from the center. So that's good. I'm going to turn the snap back on then because it makes it easier to uh, keep other things aligned. Oh, I kind of messed it up there, didn't I? Turn that off. Bring this guy over. There we go. Uh, now he's in, in line. Uh, so let's create a text box now. I need a text box to indicate that that's the force of gravity. So select the text box here. You can draw a text box. Do something like draw F. Choose subscript up here. We can make a subscript. And gravity. And that's a great little text box. You can change the font size if you want. And I'm going to drag that down next to that force arrow. So we've got force of gravity there. The red line there indicates that it's uh, not understanding the spelling there, but that's fine. It'll go away um, when you print this out. Maybe I want to do another one for the normal force. I can grab this guy and duplicate him and move him back up here and twist him around a little bit so that he's up at an angle. That'll work. I might need to use nudge to shove that over a little bit, so I'll turn off the snap and use the arrow keys to nudge him over to about where I think he should be. I can also take this text box then and copy and paste. So now I've got another box here and instead of the force of gravity of course I'm going to be calling this the normal force. So you can see how that's all working. We can get the force vectors on there nicely labeled. Last thing I wanted to show you was how you can do an equation. If you have done a full install of Microsoft Office, then you will be able to insert an object of the type equation. If you haven't done a full install of Microsoft Office, this is an optional part. Microsoft Equation Editor is an optional part of the install, so you'll have to get your Microsoft Office disks and uh, install the Microsoft Equation Editor. Uh, when you click on Equation Editor, when you insert a Microsoft Equation, it opens up the editor here and you can do things like ty type in F, click on the subscript there, Fnet equals MA. You can do nice things like that. And maybe you could do that with the word processor all by itself. But you can also do things like, you know, put in sigmas there. That's a nice thing to be able to do. You can also do crazy things like, uh, let's say you're going to be talking about work. Work is equal to, and you can put in the integral, f dx. So that's a nice thing to be able to do. Um, lots of options here. When you close this box, it places that text in your document. And you can move it around if you want. Uh, you can drag it around depending upon how you set up your object here. Um, we would probably need to, let's see, format that object. In terms of layout, right now it's in line with the text. We're going to put it uh, in front of the text, and that will allow us to do things like drag it around. You can see that we've got it now as an object, so we can put it wherever we want on the page. So that's a little bit of an introduction to Microsoft Word. It was a little bit longer than I was hoping, but uh, I hope that will serve you well in your drawings. Good luck.